See, uh, organizations uh, no longer have the patience to train new aspiring uh, professionals to understand the business model. You know what business uh, <coughs> factors are. Instant, for example, you know finance, what products they uh, manage or they sell, who the customers are. Mm-hmm. They need uh, people who are more aware of the business, the organization where its focus is, and not having to start from scratch. Yeah. So you need to have read enough and more about companies even before you interview. Most people don't uh, do that. They think that my grades and my <coughs> communication skills will get me there. But if you have to be successful once, even if you get the job, is you need not enough of the company. So you have to do a lot of research yeah. and uh, be one step ahead. Which which means you know like you've got it in your uh, curriculum that learning is a must every day. Yeah. So you have to show that because end of the day it's the value that you bring to the organization that's going to give you your job. Yeah. Yeah. So there have been a lot of articles yeah, yeah, in terms of AI overtaking the normal uh, work that human beings do. I think it's only going to complement. Okay. okay. And the way to put uh, this is. the speed at which we can process data mm-hmm. and take decisions is limited okay. right so ai is basically trying to process data faster for you okay using analytics using big data you, you know you use big yeah. data but end of the day the decision making has to be done by human beings okay mm-hmm. the way the analytics are run what analytics to run how the programming happens what decisions to make is still in the hands of the human being so that control of ai over human beings will never happen yeah. it only is to complement human beings to make better decisions and correct decisions in quicker time okay. that's what ai is about it is not the way you read in the papers oh yeah that's yeah? right robotics yes in assembly line huh. i mean let's say if you're going to buy a car tomorrow right you want everything spick and span you don't want loose nuts and bolts your dashboard should not rattle for that you think every human being can deliver equal quality pressure and torque on the spanner to get the right nut and bolt no it's a robot which does that but even to program the robot right to paint your robots you need human beings <coughs> so there's no way of uh, yeah. <coughs> right for yeah, yeah. yeah yeah so to put it very uh, technically there is something called as a grid code <clears throat> okay so grid code what it does is you know the cost of power generation varies from plant to plant in karnataka if you if you take you have uh, jog falls where you have the sharavati hydro power yeah. then you also have raichur which is a coal based power mm-hmm. the cost of generating per watt of power is different from raichur mm-hmm. and from sharavati though it's in the same state okay. so likewise if you look at all the installations in the country the cost of producing one watt of power is different but you as a consumer will pay 3 rupees 40 paisa per unit and depending on the slab right yeah. so <clears throat> even if karnataka has to import power at a higher cost <coughs> somewhere it has to get subsidized so what the grid code is going to do is depending upon <coughs> the time of day you consume power for example there will be a peak hour between let's say 6 and 8 the maximum tariff will come between 6 and 8 okay like you have this ola and uber who now yeah, have a yeah, peak yeah. time tariff yeah the same thing is going to come power okay and depending upon how you use power if you use a lot of geyser to heat up your water mm-hmm. that is what we call as negative energy into the system mm-hmm. which means <clears throat> the whole electricity grid is not going to be efficient so you will get charged more for using power to heat up your water okay but on the other hand what the government is doing is If you have a solar or a renewable source of energy, you put it back into the grid. You will get some incentives. Yeah, that's the yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> See, right now, solar energy, the two main drivers yeah. is government policy. Uh-huh. Second is the price at which you can now produce solar. We spoke about per unit cost of uh, power, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
Now the Chinese have mastered the art of manufacturing. So most of the solar panels which come are from the Chinese throughout the world. <clears throat> Second, the business, the solar business has become so huge that it's become a commodity market, which means you can literally go to an SP road and say, I want a solar module with so many, you can buy it off the shelf. That game is played by the Chinese. <clears throat> Even companies like ours, we get into the niche part of solar renewable energy because <clears throat> you need some amount of intelligence to understand how grids operate. Okay, So when you get energies from a renewable source, it cannot be directly fed into a national grid. The whole country can go to blackout if you do not automate or do not stabilize the power going into the national grid. Okay, it's like having a bottle here yeah? and you have a bigger bottle. You suddenly pour all the water in the, the small bottle, what will happen? It will be unstable and then it will overflow. So you have to control that flow and then what will happen? Sun, you never know when it is there, right? Plus, there is no technology to store energy. The renewables, the biggest challenge of renewables is that you cannot store energy even for thermal or for hydro. Mm -hmm. So the next game changer, if you want to get into anything, mm -hmm. is battery storage. battery storage. That is the biggest, biggest technology changer for the entire globe. You will change the way we live. Mm -hmm. Because if you can store this energy mm -hmm. from the sun and carry just like a mobile charger you have and just plug it anywhere, anytime. Mm -hmm then you don't need any more nuclear power. That's true. So that's the biggest uh, investment happening. Even Tesla, <coughs> yeah. they're investing big time on uh, battery storage. So is uh, GE investing. A lot of companies are investing in battery technology. That's true. That is the game changer. That's very really good nutrition. Yeah. Okay. Work life, uh, <coughs> see there are peaks where you just don't know whether you're coming or going. Okay. Okay. So it's been like this for the last one month because you're, you're driving big projects. But the challenge is um, when you go home, you better spend time with your family. But you have to make your own ground rules huh. and stick by them because uh, if you don't, you will, you know, work will, I believe work will always expand to fill time. Yeah. I mean, there's enough of work you can ask for and do. I mean, it's endless. But you know, you should know when to stop. Right? Yeah. Otherwise, uh, <laughs> people would love to give you work and then you continue to do work <laughs> all your life. <laughs> so you have to call the shots. But which means you have to be a little more efficient, you need to be organized, planned. So as youngsters, you know, you tend to uh, think that you can manage everything. You bring your brain and your smart device. Yeah. You think you have the whole world wrapped, but it's not true. End of the day, it's the human being connections that are going to make the, you know, connect the dots and mm. make you go forward. This is only a tool. It's a good tool, yeah, yeah. but don't rely on it 100%. Because the battery will die down. Yeah. You never know when it will reboot. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice meeting you. <laughs>